Welcome everybody. Here we go on programming your future with timeline. Now don't be worried if you don't know exactly your goal that you want to use for this particular session today because I am going to give you a little bit of an introduction. I'm just going to read straight out of uh, one of my favorite books here. It's called Timeline Therapy and the Basis of Personality by James and Wood Small. <clears throat> After the little introduction, I have nine questions, and I'll pause at each question, but you can also pause the video, to ask you to really get specific about the achievable outcome that you want to program into your future timeline in this session today. So they will be really good questions, and you'll be ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. And if you're not ready, pause the video, answer the questions, and just come on back to it. It's that simple. You just really turn off distractions and listen while I read um, the little transcript word for word. So you could just get into it rather than me trying to make it up, <laughs> basically. And I've done this myself. I've done this on other people. It's just uncanny how these things have come to pass, and especially the ones that I've literally just forgotten about. Um, and then they actually came true. And it's, you know, there's all sorts of little stories I could go into on these, but, you know, some have come true, and I didn't realize they came true with the problems that came attached. So you want to really be clear on your outcome and sort of cover a normal outcome, not just one where everything's perfect. Because when I refine mine um, to include that sort of thing, some really interesting, you know, synergetic uh, relationship things occurred or, um, I don't know what I said. It's just where uh, I left room for there to be solutions to things and especially where things involved other people. It just went a lot smoother. Anyway, back to our programming your future with timeline we can uh, most definitely have more discussion and questions and answers in the next video or the next hangout we do um, so I won't go on and on with any more little things but if I come up with a really cool tip I'm gonna throw it in if that's okay with you we're gonna get started right now so reading from the book on the introduction programming your future with timeline <clears throat> Over the years, as I've looked at the subject of time management and goal setting, I began to realize that some people achieved their goals and some did not. I began to notice that there was a significant difference between the people who attained their goals and those who didn't. The people who got their goals, among other things, stored the goal differently, you know, mentally stored it differently, internally, from those who did not. Then, as I taught the timeline to NLP, or neuro-linguistic programming, classes all over the country, I began noticing that the techniques I was teaching had an impact on people's ability to have what they wanted in the future. In fact, at a master practitioner training in Los Angeles last year, 50% of the participants doubled their income. One particular person tripled his income. I remember asking him what happened. He told me that he had literally followed the process for programming his future that we did in class. Interestingly, he forgot about it until I asked about the effects of future programming at a subsequent class, at which point he told me that the event had happened exactly as he had programmed it into his future. What we have here, folks, is a way to program your future so that you achieve your goals. That what you want in the future becomes real and undeniable to your brain. As a first step in programming your future, decide what you want. Make sure it's something you really want. As you think of it, consider the questions that I will be asking you next here shortly think about in general right now though when you think about what you want do you think about it in the future sense what direction that you see that in when you think about what you want 
when you think about what you want, do you think about it in the now? Have you actually taken the time to write down your goals? Have you written down or have you thought out an organized plan for what you want in the future? The reason I ask you this is because the clearer and more specific you can be about what you want in the future and the more specific you are about your goal, the more achievable it becomes. In fact, there is a direct relationship between the specificity, specific, you know, how specific the goal is, the direct relationship between how specific it is and how achievable it is. That's why everyone tells you to have goals and then not only that, write them down, not only that, visualize them, see yourself in them. This is that on steroids, what I'm about to do on the timeline for you today. So back to goals. Once you've formulated your goal or your outcome, by the way, NLP's outcome definition techniques are quite helpful in specifying, now I finally pronounced it right, your outcome. Okay, make sure you haven't set your goal or your outcome something which is a state. You don't want a state of mind. For example, a state, which is what NLP a lot is about your state of mind. Like Tony Robbins is real famous for putting people in a state of depression and then popping them right back out into a state of mind of happiness and confidence and humor in seconds. So it's, it, he knows a lot about your state of mind. But your state of mind is essentially an emotional state, okay, like confidence or pride or low self-esteem, depression, low state of mind. You know, what's your state of mind? So when you come up with your goal and your outcome, it can't just be the state of mind. You need to get into it way more in the physical world as far as the specifics and the details. The reason why it's important not to set a state as an outcome is that putting a date in the future for the achievement of a state delays having it. You could literally have the state of mind right now. So we don't want to set a date on a state. Okay? Knowing what we know in NLP about states, we know that a state of confidence or any other state of mind is something that you can have right now using anchoring patterns, like anchoring in with uh, the five senses, for example, or making it brighter, <clears throat> all kinds of little NLP techniques to really get into a state of mind or to increase a state of mind or decrease a state of mind. That's all NLP. So in defining your outcome or your goal, make sure that it is not a state. Okay, it's not a state of mind and that it has a time associated with it. So the goal has to have a deadline, a time frame, a target date. It's very important. Not that it can't be flexible, but it does need to be within a time frame. Okay, notice all this focus on time. We're talking about timelines, so we want to be specific with that also. Now, here are the questions that you can ask yourself to assist you in clarifying your goal or your outcome or your target right now. So these are much more than the standard, you know, M, you know, S, M, A, R, T type of goals, the specific, measurable. We're going to get way more into it than that. So just relax. Think about your goal in general. What do you want to achieve? What is the outcome that you want for yourself in 90 days? in three years time, a year from now, by Christmas, by your birthday, in five years, what do you see your life like in 10 years or your business like in three, you know, like that. You're going to do that, but nine other questions to really get into it more. So pick in general and now with that in mind and with the time frame in mind, answer these questions or follow along here in these little directions because this is these are key to achieving this outcome this is key right here if you skip this the timeline session I'm about to do in a few minutes it'll work but it won't work as well and promise me it's worth it to get it done well you'll be you'll thank me later you'll <laughs> you'll be happy when you look back 
All right, let's get into these questions before I uh, ramble on again. Okay, number one, stated in the positive. So what specifically do you want? Tell me that back out loud, what it is specifically you want stated in the positive. Write it down or turn on a recorder and start answering out loud if you prefer or pause the video and write it down. Okay, so now question two is be specific about the present situation. In other words, where are you right now? Where are you right now? Because you need to be in relation to this future, you need to know where you are now. Okay. For this question, make sure that the picture, or when you think of where I'm at now in your imagination, make sure it's associated, meaning you're literally in it. You're in the now, and you see yourself in the now. As opposed to later, when we think about your future outcome goal, you'll see yourself there in the future, or you'll feel yourself there later too. But we need that relationship of time. So where are you now? in relation to specifically what you want. Number three is now we're going to specify the outcome. Now on the outcome, take notes and jot down all these types of things about your senses. So what will you see when you specifically get what you want? What will you see there? What all the, you know, look around a little bit more. Don't let it be so fuzzy and blurry define it and see what else pops up even but what do you see <coughs> excuse me when you specifically or shall let me rephrase that when you have the specific thing you want what will you hear what will you hear when you're there what will you hear yourself saying what would you hear other people saying when you have the specific thing that you want, what will you feel? How will it make you feel to have it? What will you feel on your skin? What will you feel inside emotionally? And how does it feel to be there? How does it feel in your body to be there? So when you have it, what will you see? What will you hear? And what will you feel? And you can even expand on that. What will you sense? What kind of mood will you be in? What kinds of things might you be smelling? Or think about the environment. I mean, I'll go as far as thinking about I might hear birds. I might hear a person I'm talking to. I'm smelling grass. I'm smelling a fancy restaurant food. Smell is actually a very important one. Even if you forget about it later, tap into that sense of smell as well as taste um, and any body emotions or body senses or body memories. Feel the wind on your arm or the clothing you're wearing. You know, get into really how you feel, see, hear, etc. I really like to take a few moments with that one to really tap into what my my inner self is saying about those senses. Number four, evidence procedure. How will you know when you have it? So what evidence will be evident? What evidence will be in place that you can see and measure, right, when you have this thing that you want? When I look at my bank account, I will see $50,000. That's evidence that I know that I now have what I want, you know, what I had programmed myself to want. That's a good example, and I want you to think of it that way, too. How will you know you have it? Where will you be, etc.? What will things look like? How will you know? Five, this, this one's important also. Is it congruently desirable? Okay, it needs to be congruent with who you are, and, you know, in general, we'll say this loosely, congruent with reality. Okay, so if your outcome was, I want to be the Queen of England, of course, that's not congruent with reality, that that's probably, very, you know, not very um, 
improbable that that could ever happen. I mean, you have to be born into that, I believe. So that's the point here. Um, what will this outcome get for me or allow me to do that is congruent with your values, your ethics, who you are, what your desires are, what you really want, what you're good at, what you love? Is it congruent with all of that? Is your desire congruent with who you are as well as, in general, loosely so-called reality? Is it realistic enough, uh, even if you have to suspend a bit of belief, which is fine? You know, to think I might have half a million dollars in six months is really a bit of a stretch of imagination, but it's still I could use that for my timeline because it's believable enough of a stretch that I can let go of belief but just enough to think well it's possible it it might happen right now I'm not saying to have that as your goal or that that's my goal but that's congruent with my goal I mean my goal is to have fifty thousand dollars in the bank um, it could be way more than that so is it congruent with your desire? Now I might say, you know, I see a cruise ship or something, I own one. That's not congruent. I don't want to deal with the gas and the tax and the employees. And so you get my point, but I, and I do go on a bit about that because congruency is important. Number six, is it self-initiated and maintained? In other words, is it only for you, by you, you're the one who's going to act it out, you're the one who's going to get there. That it's not dependent on other people doing things that you don't know for sure at this point. Even if you think you may hire someone to do something for you at some point, and you're pretty sure they probably will carry out that task, uh, that's not necessarily what I mean, but it needs to be self-directed, self-initiated. It's coming from you. And it may include hiring employees to do things for you, but the overall outcome needs to be self-initiated and self-maintained. You need to be the CEO of your outcome. Number seven, is it appropriately contextualized? What I mean by that, where, when, how, and with whom do you want it? So in the context of where physically you are, I live in California, so it's appropriate that I can see that I'm going to be at the beach next weekend in context of where I am. If I was living in Utah, for example, that may not be really appropriate for the context of where I am as far as when and how and with whom do you want it think of who is around you say your family if you have a spouse and kids do, are, do they fit into the picture if you um, are a certain age and you want a certain thing by a certain time you know is is it appropriately fitting into the context of your particular point in time and space so where when how and with whom do you want this outcome and that also needs to be included eight is resources now here we want to get into what resources do you have right now and start thinking about them and what resources do you need or will you need to get your outcome to achieve your goal what resources do you have now you know you can use what resources do you no, you're probably going to need and so you need to be you know jotting those things down write a few notes think about those things and here's some helper questions to feel that all the resources you need to get this done can be uh, can feel closer to you or more achievable or believable or within your reach so um, as far as what resources you have now you know write a list of those and keep expanding there but as far as what resources do you need think about have you ever done this before or 
has this ever been done before by anyone? So, in other words, has this ever been done before by you or anyone else? If somebody else has done it before, then you know you can too. That, that is actually a resource. If it was something that no one's ever, ever done, it might need some more resources there. The next one, do you know anyone else who has it? So now we're not just asking, has anyone in the world done it? But do you know anyone who has it? If not, that may be a part of your outcome that you want to add in, that you will meet or be introduced to or come across people who do have it. And you will, if that's what you want to add in there as a resource. And another resource is just suppose that you did have all the resources you needed right now. Just suppose you had them all right now. Do you see that you could achieve this outcome given that all the resources you need you have right now? Those questions not only help you get specific on the goal that we're about to program into your timeline future for success, but it does help the skeptical or scared mind realize the possibilities really can expand open the more you think about it. I wasn't thinking this expanded uh, a year and a half ago. I was very closed. I just saw a bunch of closed doors. You know, Now I can see how all the possibilities can so easily be opened with just the right connections. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about is ecology. We're going to check the ecology of your goal, of your outcome, of your target. Ecology basically just means the whole entire scene. You know, so the ecology of the world is you know, all the nature, all the water, all the weather, all the people in it, all the animals, all the insects, and so forth. The ecology of my office right now has got walls, and it's got a floor and a ceiling, and it's got books in it and a chair. You know, it's the whole entire picture, uh, 3D, because things affect each other in an environment. We don't live in a vacuum. Our goal can't happen in a vacuum. So we need to know a few more things about this outcome, for instance. For what purpose do you want this outcome? Why do you want it? What's the purpose of it? Why do you want it? Why do you want to get it? So think about wha what will you gain if you have it? So if that came true and you had it, what would you gain? Think about what would you lose if you had it? And that can be anything. And this can be positive or negative. I could lose my debt, so that would be a positive, right? I could lose some of my free time because I'm going to have to put a little bit more time into some things. But I could lose stress because life feels easier when I have it. So it can be a lot of things. What will you gain, which could also be positive or negative? You could gain some more responsibility. You could gain some more money or freedom and what would you lose and here are the last four questions to help qualify a little bit more about the ecology of your overall goal so here we go what will happen if you get it not not just the purpose and the gain and the loss but what will happen if you get it right what comes to mind first thing that comes to mind what will happen if you get it and you can add, keep adding to that list. What will happen if you get it? What won't happen if you get it? So make a list of all the things that won't happen if you get your goal. The next one, what will happen if you don't get your goal? So if this goal doesn't come true, what do you know will happen? Good or bad? For me, it's usually the bad stuff because I think of, oh, I have wasted time or uh, I won't be as successful or something like that. If I don't get this, you know, what will happen? Uh, I might have to get a job, which really sucks. <laughs> and then the last one is, 
what won't happen if I don't get it? And again, these can be good and bad, but you want to focus in on all the benefits of this outcome for you. The purpose, what you'll gain and lose, the facts, what will happen if you get it, what won't happen if you get it, what will happen if you don't get it, and what won't happen if you don't get it. Write the answers. Okay, by asking all these questions, you will probably have an excellent idea of exactly what you want. I'm assuming that by now you will also have a rather detailed picture of what you want. Put that picture aside for a moment and think back about your timeline. Float up above your timeline. What I want you to do is, if you haven't done this yet, go back and re-watch the video where I prep you on your timeline. The video that comes right before this one. If you know how to do it, uh, we'll keep going. Otherwise, go do that one before you come here. Floating above your timeline, I want you to float out into the future to the time when it would be most appropriate for you to have accomplished this outcome. Go out to the point in the future when you will have accomplished the desired result. When you find the most appropriate moment for the accomplishment of your outcome, position yourself above that point in your timeline. Now bring up the picture of what you want, the one that you made earlier. Associate into the picture, meaning step into your body in that picture. Then float right into your body and feel the feelings of having what you want. Check your feelings as you make sure that the picture is bright enough, but not too bright. Notice the feelings you have and increase or decrease the brightness until the feelings feel the strongest. Next, I want you to bring it closer to you. Bring it closer and closer until the picture is close enough so that the feelings are the most intense. Turn up the colors so they are really, really rich. You know, just right. Make sure that the focus is very clear. Clear enough, but not too clear. Rich enough, but not too rich. Bright enough, but not too bright just right. Make any other adjustments you need to make the picture the most real and the most desirable. And when you're done with that, then step out of the picture so that you see yourself in the picture looking at yourself. Now, staying in the future, as you put the picture in your timeline, turn around and look towards now. Notice that all the events between then and now are changing and rearranging themselves so as to totally support you having exactly what you want in the future. And you can, can't you? Of course you can. Come back to now and looking towards the future Notice that this is just the beginning of your having what you want. Notice that the accomplishment of this event sets a direction of accomplishment for you in the future, and that it continues out into the future as far as you can see. Notice also how good it feels to have what you want. Earlier, when I asked you all those questions about your goal, you might have noticed that you needed certain resources for the accomplishment of your outcome. Let's suppose for purposes of this exercise that you discovered that a resource you needed was to learn about something in order to achieve your outcome. So I'd like to ask you to float back into the past to a time, a happy time, when you learn something easily and elegantly. The learning doesn't need to be something related to a school situation or anything 
really big, just a time anytime when you learn something really easily and perhaps so easily that you surprised yourself. You may have said, wow, I didn't know I knew all that or something like that. It could be any context where you were perhaps even surprised by how easy it was to recall all the information. Maybe you were talking to a friend or several friends and you were pleasantly surprised about how much you knew about the subject, how much more you knew than they did even. If you can't remember a time like that, then just imagine what it might be like to have had that experience. Perhaps you've seen it in a movie or had a friend who had that experience. Just imagine what it would be like to have it, or pretend you're someone who has just had that experience. It really is a mental resource just to know anything about that without having literally had it. <clears throat> okay, so good. Now float down. Float right down into your body and feel the feelings of being an ex exquisite learner, an excellent learner. Now wrap the feelings of being an excellent learner around you. Take those feelings and let them permeate your body. Feel the feelings of being a great learner. And here's one more thing. Before you had the feelings of being an excellent learner, your unconscious mind had been going through a process of allowing it to be assimilating and organizing all the information that you needed into a format that the conscious mind could easily use as needed. Whether or not you were conscious of it, your unconscious mind was already doing the work of making that information available to you in a usable way. And that's what I mean by resource. It's a mental resource. So bring that process, even if you're not fully conscious of it, bring it with you as you float back up above your timeline. Good. Now, float back above your timeline and float towards now. And as you approach and pass now, find the appropriate place to put all that you need to know to ensure your outcome. Take the feelings and put them in the most appropriate place in your future. As you do, I'd like you to notice that the experience of being such a good learner changes and affects all the events between then and now, and that in the future you can draw on the strategy of being such a great learner anytime you want. Anytime you want, you can have that ability. That's a resource. That's also an ability. Anytime you want these learning resources, they will be available to you. You have the ability to draw on them anytime you need. <clears throat> so anytime in the future when you need to learn something or you need to use any information stored in your unconscious mind, it will be there for you automatically. Now turn and look towards now. And notice that the process is also installed and that it reaches back all the way to now and even into the past. Maybe you even notice more places where you were a good learner. Even if you don't notice it, that's all right for right now because the process is still installed all the way from now out into the future and even further into the future beyond the event of what you want in the future as far as you can see. Your ability has always been there, and now you can make use of it as you need. You're more aware of it now. When you have done that, turn and float towards now. Float right back into the now, down into the now, where you are right now, and open your eyes if they've been closed. That, my friends, is how to program your future. You do that with any picture that you want in your future that you've answered the questions and clarified about you put it in your timeline go there with it really feel it and get into it and look back towards now I don't know about you but I see a really interesting thing 
happen on my timeline almost as if new images I hadn't even thought of automatically got popped in there. So let's go over a couple little things that will just help you sort of for your education to make this more compelling and to build up momentum and even reach beyond your goals. Um, just to understand a little bit about time, events, and states when we're talking about the timeline. When you're associated versus disassociated. So when you're associated, you're in your body right now. And when you're disassociated, you're sort of somewhere else. You're not really in your body. You're somewhere else. So uh, there may be times you're so engrossed in a book that you haven't realized you've been sitting in a position for three hours and your legs are all cramped up now. So that's being pretty disassociated. And that's right in the now moment. In the future, you can also be associated or disassociated. In the future, you're associated when you literally are in your body seeing what you see in the future. When you're disassociated about the future, you're basically seeing yourself in the scene of what it is you want. And you can go back and forth at will. Same for the past. You can be associated in a past memory so much that you relive it. Or you can be disassociated where you kind of just see yourself. It's more blurry or fuzzy or farther away from you or vague. I guess I'm looking for the word vague. But you're just not in it or reliving it. You just sort of remember that it happened. That's disassociated. So those two things are important because when you associate into a future outcome it is much more compelling and it just adds more momentum and it just draws on all the inner resources you have to make sure that comes true because your brain is programmed that way that's how you program your brain in your future and your mental memories of your vision of the future Okay, so when you put a future memory back into the future, it should be disassociated. So you always want to step out of it, see yourself in it, put it in the future, and then come back to now. That's another way that this makes this more powerful. When you complete work on something you want to make compelling, make sure it's disassociated. A memory that is associated, like an outcome or goal, is a memory that is disassociated without a direction so when we talk about timeline and direction moving forward and out into the future that's another reason these things are important disassociated future events tend to generalize better than do associated future events so rule of thumb be disassociated when you're ready to leave it in the future and come back to now just makes it more powerful it's not going to make it mess up. It'll just make it more powerful if you step back out. The problem with reaching a goal is that the mission has been accomplished. So you need to step out of it so that you're not having a sense of, well, I have it now, now what? If you stay associated into an outcome, especially with, with the state of mind you've created, feeling all happy and excited, you may have a sense of disappointment, like, okay, I got that, now what? And we want to leave it in an anticipatory state. State. You want to feel like you're anticipating uh, this coming true. You don't want the feeling that it's already come true. Okay? Uh, sometimes, if a future memory is associated, you have the feelings of already having it. It's less compelling you already have it. So disassociated is already always more compelling because you do not have the feelings of already having it. If you have the feelings of already having it, then you're associated. Disassociated makes it more compelling and gives a sense of direction. Direction equals movement. Movement equals energy and energy is excited because you're anticipating and that's what's going to propel momentum 
So the first few steps may feel hard, but as you get going and further along, it'll you'll go faster and it'll feel easier. So that's another cool benefit. So let's just look at the question of direction for a quick moment and then we'll wrap this up. A goal is something that when you reach it, you're complete. Now what? Do you ever have a goal that you really wanted and you have it? What do you do? You usually go on to the next goal. When you've reached it and you thought, gee, now what do I do? First you had that goal in mind and there was a lot of momentum. After you reached the goal, everything seemed to change and the moment of going towards the goal was then gone. In other words, time felt like it kind of stopped, right? In that case, you attained your outcome, but you didn't have a direction set up beyond the outcome. So if your outcome is disassociated, it creates a direction so strong, it continues to go beyond that particular goal into the same direction, and it expands and grows just as it naturally would anyway. So this goal that you accomplish will then affect other areas of your life. It'll keep on going. You can add more goals anytime you want to your timeline. But this one is installed. It is set in there. So it's the same rule for any other NLP type patterns. You want to be um, your the future state that is desired. You want to be disassociated. But say you want to be in a certain desired state right now in the present, then you need to be associated. So be here now. That's where we kind of get that. But for future desired states, you want to be disassociated. And that will create that momentum and the movement and the direction because once it's accomplished, it's just automatic like turning the light switch off like, okay, you're done and you're stopped and you just feel sort of like writer's block where you're bored again and you don't know what to do next. So that's why I went on about that there because that's real important. Okay, so that is the end of the timeline session of how to program your future with timeline for a successful image that we just created and that you clarified and we installed on your timeline. And you can also listen again if you want to enhance it or add to it or you just have a whole new brand new goal that you want to do um, tomorrow or next week or next month, come back and re-listen again and do this as often as you want to get what you want by programming your future with timeline. This has been JP Bailey. Thank you so much and I can't wait to hear about all your experiences with this little method as well as you know write down the date and come back a month later or two months later or a year later or whatever and let me know what happened and how it went also. Thanks. Take care and take action.